Let me tell you something. God is not far away. Come on, say amen. amen. God knows where every one of us are in our lives. And God is willing to help. But you've got to stretch out your hands. You can't say, God, help me. And mentally, you've calculated three alternatives because in your mind, God is always slow. Nobody left that meeting that day asking, ha, or more, we go to that meeting, but the stress they had going back removed all the blessings from their life. Because if they had gone back hungry, they would have started complaining. God killed people in the wilderness because of complaining. They would have lost all their miracles. That boy that was crippled and became healed would just notice on the way. Ah, 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 why that man is a false prophet? They will blame the pastor. Because miracles don't, do not fix your posture before God. Miracles can help you. But they do not help, they do not, miracles do, do not tell you how to walk with God. It is the word. Somebody that went to that meeting and saw the way Jesus was healing people, but it he will be, he will not just look at the miracles, he will look at the way Jesus was behaving. I noticed that when they wanted to send people away, it was Jesus that said, No, that means compassion is a culture in our kingdom. Then he will write it down. Then he noticed, he said, Just look unto Jesus, the author. He knows. He's not be reading Hare Krishna. You better set to down and read this one. Say, I want to know what all those occultists are playing. <laughs> the guy was looking at Jesus and he said, eh, I saw the way he prayed. He did not really pray for a miracle. He prayed a prayer of thanksgiving. The same thing was what he did when he wanted Lazarus to come back to life. That means in the scheme and the ratings of prayer, the prayer of thanksgiving is one of the most powerful prayers. That was what raised Lazarus. That was what multiplied. As I'm saying it now, somebody's learning something. Somebody's mind again has traveled. I just gave you a key now. That when you stay in God's presence for two hours and you are just thanking him and just worshipping him, God says you are, that kind of prayer has the capacity to raise the dead, has the capacity to multiply from what you already have, give you surplus. That's what God is saying in that. But you only see that when you look unto Jesus. Like, ah, this man is strong. Oh. Hey, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, all the spirit, all the spirit, all the fire. Slow down. Can you thank me? Oh, yeah, do it. Ah, 15 minutes. Are you tired? Can continue now. Because all of us want an application, an Instagram app. Punch it, get what you want. But God doesn't like, God likes fellowship. Huh? When you sleep with a lady without exciting her face, it's called rape. So God wants pleasure. He doesn't just want this five, five minutes thing. So when I decide to stay with him, it's because I want koinonia. I want fellowship. I want the ways of the Lord to be in my heart. And I want him to remove any false way. Any false way that is in me. So when I come to church, I come because we met in the room. Now it's time for a gathering of people who have also been meeting him during the week to come together. And a day will come and that day is always, almost here. When, when we gather like this, let if one add a psalm, then another add a prophecy. Let all, then another add a doctrine, but let all things be done decently and in order. The days are here. Very soon. We will have those meetings on Sunday mornings where pastor will not preach. He will come out and give us an exhortation. Then she will come and take a song. It will not be the choir that day.